Good day. Nano One is a battery technology company focused on next generation cathode materials for lithium ion batteries. The company just provided an update and outlook into 2024 after a very successful 2023 and review of its key accomplishments. It's Tuesday, February the 6th. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. Please remember this is neither recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. We have COO, Chief Operating Officer, Alex Holmes from Nano One joining us. He'll be giving a review of what happened last year and what we should be expecting for the coming year. Alex, there's a lot of information in your most recent news release. What are the key elements or themes that you want investors to keep in front of mind in these challenging markets? Hi, Martin, and thank you for having us. Um, and just want to talk a little bit about our looking back to 2023. I think sometimes... When there's a lot of noise out there in the markets, uh, it's really easy to forget about um, the good things that have happened at Nano One in the past year. Uh, what we put out uh, the other day was really a reminder of um, the major uh, milestones that we achieved last year, and none of them should really be uh, um, taken uh, lightly. So, uh, you know, if we start right from the beginning of the year, we kicked off with a uh, non dilutive $10 million award um, from the Canadian government. Um, and don't forget, this is at a time when we're fully integrating. We've just closed on the Candiac acquisition, um, which allowed us to take our technology to the multi-ton scale uh, of uh, LFP production. Um, with that, of course, and most importantly, uh, our team of, uh, of experts in the manufacturing of cathode active materials really gave us a massive leg up and probably shaved a couple of years off our commercialization timeline. It also completely changed the conversation with all of our collaborators. As we moved through the year, we got to a place where we de-risked the technology. We brought in a significant new partner, Sumitomo Metal Mining, uh, who invested about 5% of the company at over $3 a share. Uh, this is really important because Sumitomo is the most integrated miner to cathode active material producer with a customer set uh, already in the uh, Japanese ecosystem. Um, so things continue to progress well with Sumitomo Metal Mining. Uh, that has launched a number of other uh, conversations with other parties, uh, now seeing that Sumitomo largely validating our technology is key uh, to the energy transition. Uh, the other thing we did was we completed a pre-feasibility study on what a, a one-pot LFP production line would look like, and that helped validate uh, some of the capital and operating costs, of course, uh, but it also helped validate the uh, efficiency of uh, the throughput of the one pot process. And then we kind of wrapped up the year with um, putting out a life cycle assessment, as it's referred to, which really helped uh, solidify the uh, greenhouse gas emissions advantages that our technology brings. And as uh, we're transitioning in the energy transition here, what we're seeing is that today the automotives and uh, energy storage uh, the, in particular, the automotives are really just focused on getting batteries between wheels today. We've heard our CEO say that many, many times. And that's important because as we get into the next generation, this is about driving down costs and, and improving the environmental footprint. And so this plays really well into what we're doing at Nano One. So that's a recap of 2023. So really, last year, you got a lot of de-risking done with your, your reports and then validation by third parties, by the government, as well as Sumitomo putting money into it and sort of money talks that, that's got to give confidence that you're going on the right track, I think. Absolutely. Yep. And then this year is more looking through the news releases, more, uh, I guess, validating more things on the commercialization uh, of, of the product. So it's really actually come to think of it a bit of a pivoting year when you're focused very internally and now it's more external uh, milestones, partnerships and uh, the likes. Can you go over the key ideas or objectives there? Yeah, so our, our roadmap that we put out um, early in the first half of uh, last year, really it stays intact. So last year was about de-risking the technology, continuing to forge partnerships and relationships. This year is about getting that sample feedback uh, tweaking the product as needed for the processability with the cell manufacturers, really driving towards offtake. Uh, running in parallel to that is uh, all of the work with the uh, raw materials suppliers, uh, working with sort of the bigger, bigger companies to support our commercialization efforts. And also as part of that is completing a feasibility study. 
uh, for our project, uh, for our first commercial plant. And uh, as we uh, move those three things in parallel, we're also having conversations on the project finance side, because of course that's a key part of it is how do you secure the capital to build that first plant? And so through working with potential customers, working with the Canadian government, we're sort of lining all these pieces up and running them in parallel. Uh, so 2024 is going to be a significant year for us. And I would say not so much a pivot, it's just more of continuing to execute on the plans that we've laid out, uh, all of which build the uh, fundamental value of, of Nano One as we move forward. And you've got a car in your, your background. And I, I just want to emphasize like the world of batteries or energy storage and, and battery, that is not limited to the, um, that's a large part of the market, but there's just and, and I'm saying this in context of getting into the OEM supply chain is, is a very long and laborious process, but the rest of the market is it doesn't have that same uh, level of uh, requirements and you can get into those markets and get off takes agreements with those companies on a, a relatively much faster basis is not that not the case. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Um, and it's why we've uh, communicated over during last year um, that really our key focus or our core focus, if you will, for that first commercial plant is battery energy storage solutions, uh, some smaller industrial uh, type cell manufacturers for the exact reason you just mentioned is they're, they're quicker to validate and qualify materials. Uh, with the automotives, it doesn't stop us from running uh, the sampling and validation process in parallel, but as you say, it's a much longer process. And one of our Nano One one pot LFP production line is not sufficient to serve an automotive scale size of demand. So this is about really setting us up for that future licensing joint venture business model where the volumes are for automotive is are four to eight uh, production lines to serve one gigafactory. And then as they add gigafactories, as they grow and meet their targets, uh, of course, there would be you know, future plants that follow. So we're running both of these in parallel. Uh, so it's really a parallel effort, both on the customer qualification and sampling for offtake to at, uh, attack that uh, energy storage market and industrial and defense market. And then in parallel, running that with the automotives uh, to set ourselves up for the bigger plants uh, in the future. So offtake agreements you'd be looking for this where would likely not be in the automotive space. They'd be in others, call it sort of more niche spaces where you could fulfill a substantial portion of a presumably a client's cathode needs. It, as well, like your whole strategy of design once and build many model, you can just where you're basically building a designing a line and then you can replicate and modularize that to drop it into Candiac or in another facility in Ontario, the US or anywhere. The, the, the strategy of the actual production, a commercial production, that'll be get clarified further in this year, whether expansion will happen at Candiac or who knows where or in what type of a, a model. Is, is that fair to say? That's correct. Yeah, we're trying to keep all options open um, for that first production plant. Uh, ideally, it's it's with a partnership, um, so it's not just a go it alone approach. Obviously, with with customer offtakes being a key component of 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 you know making the decision to build that first plant, um, and then in terms of jurisdiction, we're really uh, making sure that we're weighing out all the uh, kind of pros and cons of uh, where that first plant is. Uh, anywhere from the government support and what level of support, both provincially and federally. Um, also, you know, not not opposed to southbound in the United States, um, and also land and sites that allow us to that are, don't restrict our growth beyond uh, a couple of the first couple of production lines, and that'll be important to uh, the future licensing and joint venture model, um, where we have the ability to grow within uh, the boundaries of uh, of a site. Is there generally a preference that your facility would be closer to the feedstock or closer to the end user or given the materials got to be transported anyways, it, it doesn't really matter as long as you have the right size and the right infrastructure to, to support the facility. D does the that location along the supply chain make a big difference? Uh, it doesn't make a huge difference. I mean, that's one of the things that our technology enables is is the incumbent technology where we compare against today does require some uh, some site lo co location, um, largely to try to limit uh, costs today. 
um, because of the methods and how they receive feedstocks in the form of those in the form of metal sulfates. And that's sort of, that seems to be the best solution today compared to our technology, which allows a dislocation from needing to be preferentially sourced uh, or sorry, late, uh, cited close to um, a, a, a raw material feed or a uh, cell manufacturer. Uh, I think that um, there are certain raw materials in the case of LFP, like phosphoric acid, which if you think of it as the kind of the heaviest um, uh, component and, and lo or logistically uh, most important part, you might want to co-locate close to a phosphoric acid plant, but it's not um, mandatory. Phosphoric acid is shipped uh, all over the world today. Uh, it's quite, um, quite, a, quite, a, quite a robust supply chain as it is. Well, I think we have covered most of the main topics and we should wrap things up here. Any key points or elements you want to highlight before we wrap it up? I just think, uh, you know, there's a lot of noise out there. Um, sentiment around lithium price, I think, is largely a bit of a drag on the, on the sector right now in general. I think it's really important to keep in mind that this is part of a long, uh, long term uh, energy transition where we're going to have ebbs and flows around, around a longer term double digit CAGR growth industry. And uh, Nano One, we've always focused on driving uh, economics and environmental uh, components uh, through our technology. And so, you know, our technology isn't so reliant on government subsidies or grants or other pieces. Um, we're really focused on deploying the technology in the most uh, cost effective way possible. And the second piece of that is, um, you know, I think we're seeing a little bit of slowdown in, in the adoption of EVs. Globally, it's still uh, on the up. Um, but I think an important thing to recognize is there's energy storage, there's industrial applications, there's defense applications. There's a whole other universe other than automotive um, that uh, maybe gets glossed over. So to sort of wrap it up, um, you know, really our news, our message from our CEO is about the fundamentals of the business are significantly uh, improved in the last couple of years. We continue to execute on our plans and 2024 is about that next step of continuing to execute and uh, move the company forward. Sure. I'm just going to circle back to the, the, your first comment you made on the price of lithium. It's declining and so forth. In a sense, that makes no difference to you because you're sort of buying lithium, you're processing it, you're in the process, and then you move it on. So maybe there's a smaller base to make a margin on, or I don't know how the economics, but in a sense, if lithium prices are lower, there'll probably be more demand for batteries and then more demand for uh, the, the in, in step processes. You're not the miner itself. You're not sort of uh, getting the, you're getting value for your value added process that you step put in to the supply chain. That That's correct. Yeah. So lithium price, um, it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a pass through business. So we don't have exposure to the lithium price, but um, you know, the sentiment around lithium uh, does, does weigh on the sector generally. Um, but it's a good point. It's uh, we're sort of insulated from where the lithium price is. I think the other thing to think about is lithium price where it is today. It's not going to last forever. It's going to come back if you just think about the growth trajectory in terms of the volumes needed. But it actually uh, hinders the adoption of alternative technologies to lithium ion because while the prices are low, you've got 30 years uh, track record of lithium ion batteries uh, commercialized. And so any kind of competing technologies have that much farther to go just to try to displace lithium ion. Uh, so uh, I think it's a, it's a pretty interesting dynamic that's happening right now. And um, I think uh, if we look at production volumes needing to double, triple over the next decade to be able to meet the demand, um, the, there has, there's a certain incentive price by which new demand has to come on stream. Uh, and so I don't think we sit here forever at these prices. Fair enough. Alex, that was a great conversation. I learned a lot there. Thank you very much for joining us. Great to chat with you and looking forward to having you back in the future to talk about some more news and events. Thank you, Martin. Take care.